And I'm um, watching the 60 Minutes feature yesterday, Bill. They said, we won't know the results for two or three days, most likely, maybe even longer, for who wins the presidential election. They thought the Senate race would be decided faster, but the House race would drag on, too. Just way too many close races. Well, he was making the point with, uh, with Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, which are, for various reasons, maybe slow. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other states, uh, such as North Carolina and historically Georgia, uh, vote much quicker. And those are two swing states. So, yeah, it may swing. It may hold for two or three days, or we may know uh, early Wednesday morning. That's been uh, the theme on numerous occasions yeah. in the last, say, 20 years yeah. since uh, the Bush Gore election. Yeah, the, the one that's interesting, and we'll see how it plays out, is Iowa. Iowa threw everybody kind of for a loop with the poll that came out over the weekend. Yeah, that's been discredited pretty quickly, though. By who? Oh, I was listening to a pollster this morning that talked about how that's just such an outlier that ten point they don't there's just no one putting any credibility in that. Well, it's uh, it's it's uh, three points, uh, not ten points. Well, there was one points. that was ten points. Uh, well, that was the, that was the one they were talking about. Maybe so, but the one that was three point is one of the most credible pollster in the country. Has received uh, is recognized as one of the very best pollsters. So it's not easy to dis, uh, dis yeah, we're, discredit. Yeah, three the points credible is margin pollsters, of error stuff. The most credible pollsters are the ones that have the results you want to hear Correct. no 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 any, no, 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 given no, time. no you you look you you go back in history and look where they have been john now that's uh that's passing it off way too easy so i think he just smacked you around there <laughs> no john. no i'm just, just I, bill I'm just, just backhanded you I, there are in front of there everyone. are so many polls that's and right. and the and they they all argue with each other and there's only one that counts and that's it's coming up tomorrow and i pay no attention to any any of these especially since 2016 when all of them are wrong. I mean, every single yeah, one of the polls yeah. was, was wrong. So, and, and John, do you want to talk about your campaign at all? Uh, the guest in this segment is John Hardy. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate, I appreciate you guys having me here this morning. And, and I will tell you, I think when you get this close to the elections, polls are just useless. I think polls are okay further out, but I think the closer you get to the election, the more useless they get. And, and I've never really weighed too much in on them either. They, you know, a lot of times people give the wrong information when they're polled. And uh, so, but I think when you get this close, they're they're not real. Have you ever been polled? Sure. Yeah. How about you, Bill? Oh yes, yes, several times. Professional pollsters call you. Yep. But yeah. I've never ran a poll for any of my elections. I've never mm -hmm. done any of that. No. no. Yeah, I've not had it recently. Seems a couple so years ago, quite frequently. There may be some some cycle your own, but not this year. I was not. Polling. So my name's John Hardy, and I'm running for the Berkeley <laughs> County Commission. And, uh... You wait your turn over there, young man. We'll get to you when Bill's done. Yeah, uh, John. Good morning, man. Thank Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, and uh, you're in the home stretch here now. We you're are almost done. Yeah. Tomorrow, everybody will know all. I think will be left after tomorrow's the crying. Now, I think the presidential election is going to go down the road a few days before we're going to figure that out. But these local elections ought to be wrapped up by nine, ten o'clock tomorrow night. Have you and uh, Dirk done many public appearances together other than our forum? Just the forum we had with you guys, and we had a forum with the other radio station across town. But uh, that's that's about it. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, do you wish you had done more appearances with Dirk? Or are you happy I, with the way you've been getting your message out? I think everybody kind of knows what I stand for. I've been in, in the public eye for the past six years. I've been involved in Berkeley County my entire life. I've been on the planning commission. I've served with Habitat, a local Rotarian. I've been a businessman here my entire life. I've lived in Berkeley County um, in the Eastern Panhandle my entire life. I've hung out my, my shingle here. I've raised my family here. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been really, really involved in this community. Uh, I've served in the legislature for the past six years, uh, serving Berkeley County and a portion of Jefferson County. And uh, I'm, I'm not the kind of person that likes to toot their own horn, but I will tell you I'm one of the most aggressive and one of the most successful legislators that's ever worked out of Berkeley County. I've accomplished a lot when I was in Charleston because I, when I went down there, I worked my hind end off. Now, anybody that knows me when I'm in Charleston knows how aggressive I am and how hard I push. I will do that same work ethic for Berkeley County as a county commissioner. Um, I've worked very hard to uh, make relationships and connections in Charleston, and and uh, I'm not here to take shots at anybody, but I am here to uh, clarify exactly where I stand and what I stand for. And, and Mr. Sternsbury did talk about where the rubber meets the road. So, listen, I've worked very closely with the past county commissioners over the past six years as a legislator with local economic development, roads, anything that you can think of. I've worked on it on the state level. So, um, you know, my experience uh, speaks for itself. Let's get into some of the differences between you and Dirk Stansberry. John, where do you stand on the lobbyist for the county? 
Well, sure. Yeah, I think uh, it's really easy. You know, the easiest thing in the world to do is to stand on the sidelines and throw rocks. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. So uh, when you work in the legislature, you work in Charleston and you understand how it works, you, you understand that you need every bit of help that you can get. Uh, I will tell you that access strategies. And, you know, a lot of times I hear people refer to as summer. Summer did this. Summer did that. And summer is a big part of that. But this is access strategies. The county is hiring access strategies. They are getting not just Summer Barrett, but they are getting some other big players in Charleston. And I understand, uh, you know, that we need that help. And as a legislator, you work as hard as you can. And our senators work as hard as they can. There's a lot to handle. So having that extra help down there and the benefit that it has brought back to the county has been Quad, I don't even know how many times full, but it's been a big success for Berkeley County. The money that it's brought back, the money that has that access strategy has worked, that the legislation that they have helped me pass, that they've helped other legislators pass, uh, has been tremendous. Now, with that said, being a lobbyist is all about relationships, and relationships in the legislatures change. People come, people go. So I will tell you that is something that needs to be monitored. We need to make sure that access strategies is providing the service that they are being paid for for the Berkeley County. Now, if those uh, relationships turn and people that they have uh, working relationships are not as fruitful as they were in the past, then we maybe need to go back and readjust that. Uh, if we can find another company that uh, maybe is a little fair priced and can offer good ben uh, a good benefit to the county, that may be something we need to look at. But I can tell you right now, as far as I'm concerned, Access Strategies has done a wonderful job and have positioned themselves to do a wonderful job for the near future. Would you change any of the language in the future contract in regards to expenses and reimbursement for those folks who, uh, has been pointed out, are local? And Access Strategies took people out to dinner, they picked up the tab for some of the local officials, who it would seem to the average person should not need a free dinner to understand the benefits of doing something that helps Berkeley County. Well, yeah, but you have to understand when those local officials are going out to those dinners, they're also bringing people from other areas. So it's 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 building a coalition. It's building, trying to, to build those relationships. So I will tell you, Delegate Hornby has done a wonderful job. Delegate Height has done a wonderful job working with legislators from Southern West Virginia who don't care about the Eastern Panel, don't care about what we have going on. You have to be able to build those relationships. And those relationships are built in the Capitol, but those relationships are really built and strengthened outside the Capitol at dinner at night, um, you know, sitting around and talking. And we, and don't, we don't dispute that, but can't you pay for your own dinner? Sure, you, you certainly could. You certainly could. And I'm not disputing that maybe local legislators should pay for their own dinner. But, you know, that's kind of how the lobbying game works, and that's kind of how, how it's always been. So, I mean, if someone wants to change the rules, they can change the rules. But I don't think that there's anything that's excessive that's going on um, at the legislature or through the access strategies. Bill? Yeah, uh, John, uh, uh, Dirk was on a couple minutes ago, and he mentioned uh, two policy differences between the two of you. One was zoning, and the other one's home rule. And we've t you and I have talked about home rule many times, and you invariably default to the 1% sales tax as your objection. But home rule is much more than that. We're Dillon State, and what that means is that the county commission basically has to have permission from the legislators to do anything they have not traditionally done. Home rule would be an exception to that. As you move into the county commission role, would you view home rule different than what you have in the past? No, because you can't have your cake and eat it too, Bill. You can't, if you give the county commissions, if you give the counties the ability to tax, they will tax. But you defaulted that 1%, and I was trying to stay away from that 1% for okay. the other aspects. You're talking about for them to, to have the ability to put in different what, what or, you, ordinances, ordinances and yeah, such? That, yeah, but I mean, my thing is, if you want to do that, then, then do zoning. Right. If you want to do that, then pass zoning. Okay. And and you can't have your cake and eat it, too. If you want to have the home rule, you're going to have the taxation. You're going to raise taxes. You can't say I'm for home rule, but I don't want to raise taxes because if you give any governmental ability, any government, the ability to tax, they will tax. And so so for my opponent to sit here and say that he is for home rule, but he's not for raising taxes. It doesn't work that way. You ha it's it's cut and dry. If you give someone the ability to tax an entity they will tax that entity okay i i you i don't necessarily agree with that but uh but uh, it's not That's my okay. role it's not my role to point counter and, 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 and well, also, what about, but zoning? Also, what about me, zoning but let me yeah. say this also i've never sat in front of berkeley county's budget 
I know their budget's about $53 million, and Berkeley County commissioners tell me they need that money. I believe them, but I don't know that. I don't know that to be true. Mr. Wines was in here the other day and said it was about $8.5 million in a rainy day fund. If you take that number, that's about 15% of what our budget is. Rainy day fund should run between 15 to 18%. So you're pretty damn close to what your rainy day fund needs to be. We have about a five to $7 million coming on board with impact fees. So let's let those impact fees take place and see what that raises before we automatically put more taxes on taxpayers. I'm not saying down the mm -hmm. road, John Hardy may not change, mm -hmm. But I need to see the budget, and I need to see what we're spending. And, and, and I know we're growing, and we need to have more money for fire, police, and all those areas. But the impact fees should do that. We've got the fire fees, the ambulance fees. As you get more people, those fees raise. You also have the impact fees and on the water and sewer. They don't call them impact fees. They call them um, capacity fees yeah. that you're putting on water and sewer. So those are, going, those are going to raise. So as the more people you get, you've got different ways to, to, to raise revenue. But I'm not saying... Two years from now, if I see that there's a revenue shortfall, but let's let's let put in place what we have in, that's working now. Okay, what about the zoning? The zoning, I and my my opponent changed his 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 tone on this. From what I heard him saying, and everything we've talked about, he was for zoning. Now zoning that's could be put in place by the commissioners. A five person commission can vote in zoning. They don't have to care what the public thinks. But now I've always been for a public referendum. If there's an organization that puts themselves together and gets unified and puts together a good group and they want to have zoning in Berkeley County and they are able to put together a, a plan to put it for refer for public referendum. Right. I wouldn't stand in the way of that because I think that's democracy. But as a commissioner, I'm not going to vote to put zoning in the in the county without the blessings of a referendum. Of course, that's never been proposed in Berkeley County. When we tried uh, zoning uh, back in the 90s, late 90s and then 2010, it was always predicated on a referendum. No one, even though you're right, the county commission could do it, but they never chose. Sure, and I, I'm not against a public referendum. Yeah, yeah. I passed legislation that put the fire fees to public referendum. Used to, there was the fire board could just recommend what they wanted the fire fee to be. And I was like, no, we're not going to do that. If you're we we clarified that the county could use that money for paid firefighters. Well, when I wrote that bill to clarify that for paid firefighters, I also wrote in that bill that the only way the fire fee could be raised is through a public referendum. I mean, if people want services, yeah. then they have to vote to pay for yeah. it. Is that transfer tax 100 percent yet? Uh, it's coming no, back. No, it's the probably account? it's a, probably at about 60 percent right now. But right there, that's another piece of legislation. You know, Mr. Stansbury talks about when the rubber meets the road. That's a piece of legislation that I passed. That's going to bring like one point eight million dollars back to Berkeley County when it's fully funded per year. That was yeah, per year. And that's our money. That's our money that we made here in Berkeley County that was going to Charleston is going into general revenue for nothing. It was redistribution of wealth from Berkeley County. That's our money that I brought back to this county. Is that going up 20 percent a year and then it? In five years, it's done. Is that the deal? It's a five-year turn in, and I think it's twenty percent to right. hundred. It, that's a it's. It, but there's also some money pulled out for the clerk, so the clerk gets the first chunk of money to make sure that all the voting equipment. Because a lot of a lot of counties, not our county, but a lot of counties do not give the clerks the money they need for the voting equipment, mm -hmm. and so we pulled out that money to make sure the clerks have what they need. Our county is in great shape. We have good equipment. We have new equipment, and um, I don't even think the clerk needed that money. John Gilstra. <clears throat> if elected, what's the first priority as a commissioner? There had to be something that drove you to make this change. Roads. It's got to be roads. We've, I mean, the time for us to be reactive to our road system in the Eastern Panhandle is over. It's over. We can't just fix and ditch and patch and repair the roads that we got. We need new roads. We need to build our road system. Let me tell you how I'm going to do this. I'm working right now with Delegate Hornby and Delegate Height and Senator Barrett on trying to get an, and, and also working with Patrick Morrissey. I've had, had breakfast with him, and we had this conversation about having a new highway district for Berkeley, Jefferson, and Morgan County. Our highway district is up in Burlington, right? Nowhere's near what's going on in the eastern panhandle. You go up to Romney, up there in Hampshire County, they have the most beautiful roads you've ever seen because they're all working right around home. Right. So we need to have our own division here for Eastern Panhandle. We need to be this is where all the growth is. And we need to have a new division of highways right here. And the headquarters of that needs to be out here off of Rockcliffe Drive to take care of our roads. And then we need to work with whoever is going to be the new secretary of division of highways and the governor and the governor to figure out what we're going to do about the road system in Eastern Panhandle. And they spending state money to do that. There's no local money to do that. States, the roads are the only people that have money to take care of roads are municipalities. 
Municipalities take care of their roads, and the state takes care of all the other roads. The county commission has no money to take care of roads, and the county doesn't. We don't want the roads, right? We don't have the revenue to take care of them. But it's the state's it's the state's responsibility to understand that this is where the growth is, this is where the taxes come from, this is where they need to spend their money. They just spent a bunch of money on some highway down there called the King Cole Highway. It's a big highway that goes to nothing. Goes to nothing. They just because they, they keep dumping money in southern West Virginia to try to fix it and they can't fix it. They need to understand the money needs to be spent here in the Eastern Panhandle. But you could do, I would think you'd have more influence as a delegate than you will as a county commission working for roads. Well, I think I think I can. I think I could, but I also can have a I can have a lot of push from a, a county commissioner. I have a wonderful relationship with the whole delegation from the Eastern Panhandle. I have a working relationship with the Senate, a working relationship with the House. I'm going to have a great working relationship with the next governor of the state. And I think and as being a county commissioner, I can intimately, intimately know the issues of Berkeley County and be able to work with the legislature, the governor, and all any division secretaries that I need to work with and go directly to them and work with them. John, let's talk about parks in Berkeley County. Uh, where would you like to see the next park? And in regards to funding parks, your thoughts on keeping this uh, this county uh, parks and uh, this county's parks in good shape? Yeah, well, I think there needs to be a big park on the north end, somewhere in the Spring Mills area. There needs to be a big park there. We've got one out to Poor House. We've got the Randy Smith Center up on the south end. We've got the the Berkeley 2000 there in town. I think we need to, we got a small park that's going in in Spring Mills. Um, I think it was called Hoax Run or something. It was a Civil War area a small piece of rocky territory that the school board gave to the to the county. So, um, But uh, I think we need to look at a large park there. Do you know that there's not one, not one public ramp that goes into the Potomac River in Berkeley County? Yes. Not one public bro- boat ramp in Berkeley County to go on the Potomac River. I mean, so well, I think th- that... That was I, discussed with Sportsman's Paradise a few years back when Steve was still in charge, but they but, determined there wasn't enough funding to staff it. Also, there's not deep water there at Sportsman's Paradise. Correct. We, we had a place just above Dam 5 that literally died on the day of closing. That never happened, but, uh, close. but you're right. But how are you going to solve that problem, John? Everybody recognized that, but I do not know of a single landowner that's prepared to donate or give his property away for deep water boat ramp. What about down at DuPont's Landing? They, they've, they've closed that down. They don't use that anymore, that piece of property. Why couldn't we approach the new owners that put in, they're putting in commercial metals and putting in that big solar field out there that owns that property? DuPont's Landing was a huge area that the, uh, the employees of DuPont used for years and years. It's deep water access. It has plenty of places for parking. It has a nice boat ramp. You know, maybe that's something that the, the county could lease. Yeah. But I think a, a portion of this impact fee that's going to be collected is going to go to um, Parks and Rec or, or what we call uh, um, uh, quality of life. But, you know, that money is going to go to fire, police, EMS, quality of life. I'm sure the school board is going to try to get their fingers on some of it. But uh, what is your feeling about impact fees? I know the county has not yet made a decision. You'll probably be involved in the discussion. Where do you see the priorities for the recipients of impact yeah, fees? Yeah, I, I think impact fees are, are a direct effect of what's going on in your county. And I believe as long as they are kept at the right amount and not an absorbent amount, they don't need to be fifteen or $20,000. Yeah. I think if we land somewhere between five to $7,000 per home, then we are collecting uh, on the residential uh but, but construction that is affecting our county. But my question is just the opposite end: the uh, where the money should go, not where the. Oh, money I should think go. that's going to. There's going to need to be a study on that. I think most of it needs to go to public safety. It needs to go to fire, EMS, police, and and then a, a portion goes to parks and recs. I know the school board's going to want a part of it, but I, I, I'm not in favor of that. Them getting too much. I mean, let's think about this now. Listen up, everybody. Eighty-one cents. 81 cents of every dollar you pay on real property taxes for your home goes to the school board. 81 cents. So I don't know how much of the school board I want them taking of these new impact fees. Now, I'm sure there's going to be some legal wrangling that the school board's going to get a piece of it. John, go ahead. Uh, I think that, should, that, should, that should light up our Facebook page yeah. <laughs> here in a second. Sure. We've got 90 seconds left. All right. That's it? It goes fast. Yeah. Um, Given the politics of the candidates that are going to the the House and the Senate from this area, how do you see the interaction with the 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 uh, 
county commissioners and the local legislation legislative teams. I think the county commission right now has a wonderful relationship with the delegation that we have now. There's going to be three or four new ones, five new ones maybe. I mean, we just have to build those relationships. I mean, I've known Tom Willis. For me and him ran an election together back in 2018. I uh, don't know Chris Anders that well. I've talked to him a few times. Not, not, or Lucia. I've talked right. to Lucia. She's been in my office in Charleston. Um, I've met with Lisa White. She seems like uh, that she may win that race. I, I just You're going to have to see who wins and just try to build relationships with them. But luckily, that's a strong suit of mine, building relationships with people and working with others. John, 30 seconds. Tell them why they should vote for you. Vote for John Hardy because let me tell you something. Being a county commissioner, you do three things. You manage people, projects, and money. That's what I've done my entire life. I've managed people projects and money my entire life you build relationships you make berkeley county stronger you work with the 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 uh, people in charleston you work with the legislature the senate the house you work with your other commissioners listen it's a team it's a team let me be a part of the team john thanks uh, for coming in today man thank you appreciate you making time for us and uh, we've got a final minute coming up next here at 9 57